Hey watercolor wizards, Harjar here. Today I'm going to be working on an ink and wash study and it'll be a master study of a Beatrix Potter style bunny so I hope you'll enjoy it. And I'm also going to be giving an update about how I feel about the Raza easel after I've used it a little bit. So I hope you find this video informative and also interesting. Thanks for parking your brushes here and let the epic art adventures begin. $7 patrons get all my new longer private YouTube videos, free passes to my six Skillshare videos, along with info dance, deconstructed art and Q&A posts, video notes, and sketch downloads. You can check out my public index of all my Patreon posts divided by category and with free public post links labeled for easy perusal by all. I'm sharing a shorter version of this demo publicly on YouTube, but if you're a $7 patron, then you're watching an in-depth, leisurely, almost real-time version with lots more information and instruction about how I painted this study. And you can see a complete list of the art materials that I used to paint this on my Patreon post for this project's video. And I'm going to be using my Raza easel for this. I did a full review on this, discussing just the easel in a past video, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. And so you can check out that easel review in full if you want to look at just the Raza easel. So this is more of a post-use review that I'm going to be discussing it because I really do think I'm going to be using this easel a lot because it's so lightweight. And again, if you're watching this in September of 2019, then there is a live Kickstarter going on for this easel right now. So you can go and grab one of the first easels out there of this type and also help to make a small business successful so they can provide way more options and sizes and types if you help this great product made by great people succeed. And I'm very happy that my friend Steve Mitchell from Mind of Watercolor also is supporting this. I sent him an email and he's such a sweet guy that he just got back to me and said, well, if you recommend it, then I'm going to give it a shot. And he went and supported it on Kickstarter too. So really appreciate him being such a sweet guy. And remember the Kickstarter is only live till the morning of October 14th. So if you want to go pledge and support this as a new product, then remember it's an all or nothing type of thing if it's Kickstarters. So make your way over there if you're interested and buy one of these easels. And remember, I actually am also pledging on Kickstarter. There's not much chance that I'm sitting here being biased because I actually paid for it and it's not going to be a free product. I'm going to be setting this easel up at many different angles as I'm painting this. Just in this painting, I used five different angles and I made a note of it. So I was using it at 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees, 40 degrees, and 45 degrees. And I'm more comfortable with the lower angles because it hurts my shoulders less and it also hurts my wrists less actually to have a flatter angle but sometimes I don't want it completely flat a little bit of diversity to help my ergonomic posture and everything so I did like that it was very easy to change that it's a really light little compact portable easel so I did change the angles a lot of this easel while I was painting which was really helpful and when I did use the easel at the higher angles it was again not something that I do long term because that's not my most comfortable angle, but it's great for short times where I want to see the actual artwork at a different angle or also when I'm doing this as a display or demo 60 degrees, it's a great viewing angle to try to show somebody what I'm doing. The rubber grips did hold onto the desk pretty well. And I also had some reservations about whether or not that part that hangs over the top of the easel would bother me. And honestly, as I was using it, I didn't even notice it once. That's the best way to know if something is a good tool, is if it just gets out of the way so you can do your work. And the overhang part can also do something that my other drawing boards can't do. Um, I can mount a little webcam or a little book light if I'm sitting someplace in a dark car or plane, mount a little book light on there. So if I wanted to light up my pad or what I was painting on, and it's a very natural place to put it. And I'm doing my actual painting on the chipboard backboard so it's much more resilient than the cardboard one and they did tell me that now they're going to be providing the chipboard backboard to all of the different paper pads as well as selling it alone with a clipboard so no matter what kind of Raza easel you get you're not going to get a cardboard backboard you're always going to get a chipboard backboard and then the limited edition maple easel if you get it from the kickstarter so so far i find this product to be really versatile and very portable and fun so Beatrix Potter lived from 1866 to 1943, and she was an English writer, illustrator, natural scientist, and conservationist. She was born into an upper-middle-class family and educated by governesses, and she was isolated a lot from other kids. She had numerous pets and also holidays in Scotland in the Lake District, and that helped her develop a love and fascination with landscape, flora, and fauna, and that shows up in her study of it later, as well as her illustration of various plants and animals. 
She studied and did watercolor illustrations of fungi, and that led to her being in the mycology field. She was unfortunately rebuffed by the director at Kew Gardens at the time because of her gender, and though Potter wrote up her conclusions and submitted a paper on her mycology findings on the germination of the spores of the Agaricinae to the Linnean Society in 1897, she didn't really get what she wanted out of that field. Her paper was introduced by George Massey because, as a female, Potter could not attend proceedings or read her paper herself. Eventually, she withdrew her paper, realizing that some of her samples were contaminated, but continued her microscopic studies for several more years. Her work has only recently been rediscovered in the mycology field, along with the rich artistic illustrations and drawings that accompanied it. The Linnaean Society issued a posthumous apology to Potter for the sexism displayed in its handling of her research. Beatrix Potter was influenced by many fictional stories, fairy tales, and work by Randolph Caldicott, as well as Walter Crane. She also had the benefit of her father having a very special friend who influenced her, and that was Sir John Everett Millais, one of the co-founders of the Pre-Ralphulites. Like Kate Greenaway, Beatrix Potter started her venture into formal published work with holiday cards, and it was when she was 36 that she published The Tale of Peter Rabbit, and then she did books full-time, and she created 30 books total, and 23 of these were children's tales. When she was first starting out, ink was her primary medium, and she only added simple colors even to The Tale of Peter Rabbit at the request of the publisher, who thought it would sell much better if it actually had color in it as a children's book. And she was also a pioneer in that she designed a lot of spin-off merchandise based on her books, and she actually designed her first Peter Rabbit doll in 1903, shortly after the book was published. And she followed this up with painting books and board games, wallpaper, figurines, baby blankets, china tea sets, and really set the stage for Disney merchandise or Star Wars merchandise. And I'm not really in agreement with exploiting people's nostalgia for a fictional character, but I do think that what she did was very innovative. She was a single woman, and at that time trying to become independent and make a living. I don't blame her for being creative and experimental and innovative. I just don't think it opened the door to some very good things with all of the merchandising that we sort of unfortunately heap on kids and even adults nowadays. In 1905, after her fiancé Norman Warren died of pneumonia at 37, he was only engaged to her for a month, and her parents disapproved of it because he was in trade. She took her book proceeds and legacy from her aunt and bought Hilltop Farm in near Sari. She also purchased additional farms over decades to preserve the hill country landscape, and she became a prize-winning breeder of Herbwick sheep and a very prosperous farmer. She did still reside with her parents, who were English Unitarians, until her marriage at the age of 47. And her parents' home is unfortunately no longer there. It was destroyed in the Blitz during World War II, and it's now a primary school. Though it does have a plaque there that anybody who's visiting can see that says that Beatrix Potter used to live there. So getting back to when she got married, that was in 1913, and she was 47, and she married William Helis, who was a local country solicitor. And again, her parents disapproved of this match as him not being high class enough and rich enough because he was just a local country solicitor. But though they were childless, they did end up with a happy marriage of 30 years, so it was a good move on her part. She stopped writing and drawing due to diminishing eyesight in later years, and in December 1943, she died of pneumonia and heart disease at 77. She left most of the property that she'd managed to accumulate, which was an astounding 4,000 acres, to the National Trust, and she's credited for preserving much of what is now the Lake District National Park. Her husband died 20 months after her and left his portion to the National Trust as well. So it was really a grand legacy of respect for nature and animals that she and her husband left behind. And along with the really charming books that she did, she also did a book called Kitty and Boots, which was an unpublished manuscript that was found and eventually published in 2016 with illustrations by Quentin Blake. And I love Blake's illustrations for Roald Dahl's books, but I have to say I really missed the sort of charming sweetness and also that hint of naughtiness that happens with all of Beatrix Potter's illustrations. When you have in your mind how a certain world should be illustrated, and you can't so easily replace it with somebody with a style that's that different. I think I have a digital copy of it, and it's still a cute little story. And after that, we're all done. It's a really cute little piece, and it's all ready to be varnished with a gloss varnish, ready to be hung up, and it's a six-inch wide circle. It's a nice little painting size. Well, wizards, I hope you enjoy this bunny study and also discussing the Raza easel again. If you're watching the shorter version, it's a public one on YouTube. If you're watching the almost real-time version, then you're a $7 patron with access to the full leisurely demo with lots more information and instruction on my Patreon. 
Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my website dashboard for easy access to all my online platform links on a single page to support my art creation and instruction. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you all fantastical ink and wash adventures.